During this lesson range, the following sounds are introduced. Remember how to say the sounds without varying the pitch. R, e, s. The most common format for sounds is the sounds firm up. Let's review the important teaching techniques for sounds firm up exercises. First, focus your finger on the big ball of the arrow. Pause a few seconds, then say, get ready, and signal by looping to the dot under the symbol. After keeping your finger on the dot for several seconds, you crisply take your finger off the dot and move to the big ball of the arrow for the next sound. Remember to have your eyes on the children as you signal. To correct, if children mispronounce a sound, you use a model lead test procedure. To correct, if children simply forget or misidentify a sound, you use a model test correction. The first in-program mastery test appears after Lesson 7 in Fast Cycle and after Lesson 8 in Reading Mastery and then after every five lessons. By now, you may have administered one of these tests. Let's review the major points. Periodically throughout both Reading Mastery and Fast Cycle programs, short tests appear in the teacher presentation book. There is a reminder note at the end of the lesson followed by the test. It's important to be alert for these reminder notes and administer the tests as they occur because they provide criteria for skipping lessons, remediating, and regrouping. Mastery tests are administered individually and usually evaluate only one skill, so they take only a few minutes to give. You may test after you've taught your regularly scheduled reading lesson, at another time during the day, or a day or two early for your most capable children so that only the children you are doubtful about will have to be tested on the day indicated in the teacher presentation book. Before presenting a test, write the names of the children in a group on a sheet of paper. After presenting each test item, record an indication or of pass or fail for each item. At the end of the test, record the number that is the total items missed by the child. The results determine whether you should skip a lesson, proceed to the next lesson, or repeat tasks from previous lessons in order to firm up a critical skill. The criterion is specified at the end of each test. Procedures for firming are also provided. If the whole group is weak, firm them during the regularly scheduled period. With instructionally naive children, these procedures may take longer than a single reading period. However, if only a few students need firming, schedule it at another time. Do not prevent the entire group from moving ahead. If test results indicate that the group should skip lessons, you may choose to have them complete take-home tasks for the skipped lesson during a free period. For a more detailed description of the mastery tests and how to administer them, see page 8 of your teacher's guide. We have practiced all the main formats and procedures from Lesson 13 through 24 from Reading Mastery 1 and the equivalent Lessons 3 through 7 from Fast Cycle 1. Before you teach from this lesson range, you might want to practice using the teaching techniques for all the exercises in a whole lesson, including the take-home, and preview each mastery test. On Lesson 21 of Reading Mastery 1 and Lesson 5 of Fast Cycle, a take-home format begins for the reinforcement of sequencing skills. At the beginning of the row is a completed model pair. Students fill in the missing symbol in the incomplete boxes. I'll demonstrate. You can respond 
as a student. My turn. I'll follow the arrow and say what's in the box. Frog, mmm, again. Frog, mmm. I'll follow the arrow, and when I stop, you tell me what you see. Get ready. Frog, mmm. Okay, we have to fix up every box to say frog, mmm. My turn to tell you what is in this box. Frog, nothing. Your turn to tell me what this box says. Get ready. Frog, nothing. Good, all right. The box should say frog, mmm, but it just says frog. So what do we have to put in this space? Mmm. Yes, mmm. Then the box will say frog, mmm. All right. Now, everybody, let's look at this box. It should say frog, mmm, but it just says frog. So what are we going to have to put in this space? Mmm. Yes, mmm. Then the box will say frog, mmm. Everybody, take your pencil and fix up these boxes to say frog, mmm. Errors may occur in the Reading Mastery 1 rhyming exercise when you ask students, what are you going to say first? Or when you ask, then what are you going to say? I'll demonstrate step A from Reading Mastery 1 and the correction. You're going to say a word slowly. Listen, first you'll say, mmm, then you'll say, at. Listen again. First you'll say, mmm. Then you'll say, at. What are you going to say first? Mmm. Then what are you going to say? At. Then you say, at. Then what are you going to say? At. Yes, at. Starting over. First you'll say, mmm. Then you'll say, at. Listen again. First you'll say, mmm. Then you'll say, at. What are you going to say first? Mm. Then what are you going to say? At. Yes, at. Then I'd continue on to the next step in the exercise. Notice to correct, I simply modeled the correct response. Then you say, at. Then I repeated the question. Then what are you going to say? After I got the correct response, I repeated the part. I said, starting over. So part firming for that kind of an error included a model test type of correction. If the child still responds incorrectly, you'd model then lead and test. If you are using Reading Mastery 1, practice that correction with a partner. When you are acting as the student, you will make an error when your partner asks, what are you going to say first? Or, then what are you going to say? If you are using Fast Cycle, don't stop the tape now. Now I'll demonstrate correcting and part firming for a stopping between the sounds type error. I'll use Step E from the Fast Cycle exercise. Here's a new word. Listen. First you'll say f. Then you'll say un. Get ready. F. Un. Everybody say the sounds without stopping. My turn. F. Fun. Say it with me. Get ready. F. Fun. Un. Again. Get ready. F. Fun. Un. Again. Get ready. Fun. All by yourselves. Get ready. Fun. Again, get ready. Fun. Good saying the sounds without stopping. Starting over on saying the word fun slowly. Listen. First you'll say f. Then you'll say un. Listen again. First you'll say f. Then you'll say un. What are you going to say first? Then what are you going to say? Un. 
First you'll say f, then you'll say un. Get ready. Fun. Again, get ready. F fun. Say it fast. Fun. Yes, fun. Good job. Everybody starting over. And then I'd repeat the whole exercise from the beginning. Now, in a group, practice presenting the whole rhyming exercise with corrections, part firming, and individual turns. Later, a new rhyming format is introduced. I'll demonstrate the Reading Mastery version. You respond as a student. You're going to say a word slowly. Listen, first you'll say rrrr, then you'll say ock. Listen again, first you'll say rrrr, then you'll say ock. What are you going to say first? Rrr. Then what are you going to say? Ock. First you'll say rrr, then you'll say ock. Get ready. Rrr, ock. Again, get ready. Rrr, ock. Say it fast. Rock. Yes, rock. You're going to say another word slowly. Listen. First you'll say mmm, then you'll say I. Listen again. First you'll say mmm, then you'll say I. What are you going to say first? Mmm, then what are you going to say? I. Good. First you'll say mmm, then you'll say I. Get ready. Mmm, I. Again, get ready. Mmm, I. Say it fast. My. Yes, my. You're going to say another word slowly. Listen. First you'll say s, then you'll say e. Listen again. First you'll say s, then you'll say e. What are you going to say first? S, then what are you going to say? E. Good. First you'll say s, then you'll say e. Get ready. S, e. Again, get ready. C. Say it fast. C. Yes, C. The Reading Mastery version of this rhyming format includes steps that don't appear in Fast Cycle. You ask and signal for students to say the sounds they'll say when they rhyme. Watch. What are you going to say first? Then what are you going to say? The other signal you use in both Reading Mastery and Fast Cycle when you teach rhyming is the hand drop for saying the word fast. With brisk pacing and clear signaling, you link together the steps for rhyming and saying the word fast. I'll demonstrate. First you say, mmm, then you'll say, at. Get ready. Mmm, at. Again, get ready. Mm, Matt. Say it fast. Matt. Yes, Matt. Let's practice linking those steps together and signaling. We'll say, get ready, and signal, and then say, again, get ready, and signal, and immediately say, say it fast, and do the hand drop signal. We'll start on the count of three. One, two, three. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Again, get ready. Mm, Matt. Say it fast. Matt. Yes, Matt. Let's do that again. One, two, three. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Again, get ready. Mm, Matt. Say it fast. Matt. Yes, Matt. Now practice in pairs the signaling, pacing, and monitoring for this format. When you act as a student, don't make errors. If you have Reading Mastery 1, use Lesson 19, Task 9. That's the exercise I demonstrated. 
If you have Fast Cycle 1, present the rhyming exercise from Lesson 4, Task 9. It's similar to the format I demonstrated. A common error students make on rhyming is stopping between the first sound and the rest of the word. Instead of saying m at, they say m at. Remember, for blending errors, errors of production, you use the model e test type of correction. I'll demonstrate that correction. The error will be on step E of the Reading Mastery 1 exercise. I just said, all by yourselves, first you'll say Mm, then you'll say at get ready and one student in the group says mm, at say the sounds without stopping my turn mm, at say it with me get ready mm, at. at again get ready mm, at. at again get ready mm, your turn. First you'll say mmm. You'll say at. Get ready. Mmm. At. Good job. Let's practice that correction together. You just heard at least one of the students in your group say mmm. At. On the count of three, we'll begin the correction by stating the expectation. One, two, three. Say the sounds without stopping. My turn. Mm, Matt, say it with me. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Matt, again, get ready. Mm, Matt. Matt, again, get ready. Mm, Matt. Matt, your turn. First you'll say, mm, then you'll say, at. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Let's do that correction again. A student just said, mm, at. On the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Say the sounds without stopping. My turn. Mm, Matt. Say it with me. Get ready. Mm, Matt. At. Again. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Matt. Again. Get ready. Mm, Matt. Matt. Your turn. First you'll say mmm. Then you'll say at. Get ready. Mmm. Matt. Now practice that model lead test correction in pairs. Remember to lead until you get two correct responses in a row. Assume that the error occurred on step D in the Reading Mastery 1 exercise or step C in the Fast Cycle exercise. After you say get ready, your student will say mm at. Remember, to firm when you hear a blending error, first you model lead and test on the word, then repeat all the steps for that word, then you start the exercise over. Finally, when students do the whole exercise without error, you give individual turns. Rhyming is another pre-reading skill. During the rhyming exercises, students blend the first sound of a word with the rest of a word. For example, using m mm as the first sound and rhyming with at, the children are taught to blend the two parts and say the word mat. 
The rhyming track begins in Lesson 16 in Reading Mastery 1 and Lesson 3 in the Fast Cycle program. Find the exercise in your teacher presentation book. The initial rhyming format is completely oral. You don't show the children anything in the teacher presentation book. I'll demonstrate the exercise from Reading Mastery 1. It includes a model lead test teaching sequence. You can respond as a student. My turn to say a word slowly. First I'll say, mmm. Then I'll say, at. Listen again. First I'll say, Mm, then I'll say at. Here I go. Mm, at. Do it with me. First you'll say mm, then you'll say at. Get ready. Mm, at. Again, first you'll say mm, then you'll say at. Get ready. Mm, at. All by yourselves. First you'll say mm, then you'll say at. Get ready. Mm, at. Again, get ready. Mm, at. Very good saying mat slowly. You might have noticed that the timing between when I said get ready and when I started the signal was the same consistent timing as in earlier formats. The get ready alerts children to take a breath and answer. When I signal, I vibrated the first finger I put up to alert students to hold the first sound for about three seconds. Then I crisply put up my next finger to signal students to say the end of the word. Finally, I put both fingers down. Watch the signal again. Get ready. Note that as I signaled, my eyes were up, ready to monitor student responses. In a few moments, you're going to practice that signal when you present rhyming steps for the word mat. Those of you who are using FastCycle will see that the introductory rhyming format in FastCycle is different from the format I demonstrated from Reading Mastery 1. There is no lead step and there is a Say It Fast. For the signal practice session, omit the Say It Fast. Practice only on the rhyming signal on steps A through D. If you are using Reading Mastery 1, just follow the script and be sure that you do lead. Answer with the children and then let them answer by themselves as indicated. Now, in pairs, practice the rhyming signal until you have brisk pacing and can look up from the script to monitor. When you're acting as a student, don't make any errors, but do give your partner feedback. A slight variation of the sounding out format appears on Lesson 23 of Reading Mastery 1 and Lesson 6 of Fast Cycle. In this format, you direct the children to identify the first sound and the next sound on your take-home before they look at their own take-home and blend the sounds. I use a pull-out touch signal for the symbol identification. Watch my signal for that new part. Everybody, look at my take home. You're going to sound it out by saying the sounds on the arrow. What sound are you going to say first? E. Yes, E. What sound are you going to say next? Mmm. Yes, mmm. Everybody, put your finger on the first ball of the arrow. When I clap, 
you're going to quickly move your finger under each sound and say "eem." Sound it out. Get ready. Eem. Again, finger on the first ball of the arrow. Sound it out. Get ready. Eem. Good moving your finger and saying "eem." Now you practice that sound out exercise in a group of three or four people. The most common type of errors children make during this exercise are not moving to the next symbol and pausing between sounds. The correction and firming for either of these errors includes a model lead and test. It should also include praise for students who respond correctly. That praise functions as the expectation for the group. Watch. Everybody, put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. I'm going to say sounds without stopping. You're going to touch under the sounds as I say them. Quickly move your finger under each sound when I say it. I'll say the sounds you touch. Get ready. Good touching, everybody. This time, you're going to say as you touch under the sounds. Finger on the first ball of the arrow. Touch under the sounds and say sa. Get ready. Sa. Lucinda and Maurice, good touching and saying the sounds without stopping. My turn to do that. Sa. Everybody touch your own take home and say the sounds with me. Finger on the first ball of the arrow. Get ready. Sa. Again. Get ready. Sa. Again. Get ready. Sa. All by yourselves. Touch under the sounds and say. Sa. Get ready. Sa. Good. Again, finger on the first ball of the arrow, touch under the sounds, and say. Sa. Get ready. Sa. Good moving your finger and saying. Sa. Without stopping between the sounds. Then you'd give individual turns. In a group, Practice the exercise using the correction and praise procedures I just demonstrated. Step G of this format indicates that you are to give individual turns. Remember, you give individual turns only after you've done any corrections needed and all the children in the group appear to be responding correctly. If a child makes an error during the individual turn, have the whole group respond during the correction and finally give individual turns again. Now practice the whole exercise through step H. On Lesson 22 of Reading Mastery 1 and Lesson 5 of Fast Cycle, a sounding out take-home format appears in which the children not only touch under symbols on their take-home worksheet, but also say and blend the sounds by themselves. Read over that exercise and study what you will do and say. Also find the actual take-home worksheet 
or make a sample on a piece of paper. Here's a demonstration of the teaching and management techniques for that exercise. One voice will represent the group. Everybody, put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. I'm going to say the sounds without stopping. You're going to touch under the sounds as I say them. Quickly move your finger under each sound when I say it. I'll say the sounds you touch. Get ready. <clears throat> this time you're going to say sa as you touch under the sounds. Finger on the first ball of the arrow. Touch under the sounds and say sa. Get ready. Sa. Again, finger on the first ball of the arrow. Touch under the sounds and say sa. Get ready. Sa. Good moving your finger and saying sa. You might have noticed that the first three steps of the format are like the previous sound out exercise because the teacher models blending while the children touch under the symbols. But after modeling blending in this format, you signal for the students to touch and blend. Your teaching techniques are the same as those you used in previous types of sound out exercises. Your signal is auditory, a snap, a clap, or a tap, and you wait about three seconds between each signal. This pause is critical because you, if you do go too fast, low performers may not be able to respond correctly. Finally, you monitor carefully and praise children who keep their eyes on their take home and their fingers in the right place. Now, we're going to practice using those techniques. Get your teacher presentation book and a sample take home ready. We'll start teaching at step B on the count of three. One, two, three. Everybody, put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. I'm going to say the sounds without stopping. You're going to touch under the sounds as I say them. Quickly move your finger under each sound when I say it. I'll say the sounds, you touch. Get ready. Sa this time, you're going to say sa as you touch under the sounds. Finger on the first ball of the arrow. Touch under the sounds and say sa. Get ready. Again, finger on the first ball of the arrow. Touch under the sounds and say sa. Get ready. Sa. Good moving your finger and saying sa. Rewind and practice that exercise again until you can maintain a brisk pace. Now you practice that exercise in a group. When you're acting as a student, don't make any errors.
The most common error that children make is not moving their fingers from one symbol to the next as soon as you say the sounds and signal. I'll demonstrate the correction procedure for that kind of error. You'll see the finger of the student who is not responding on time. Put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. I'm going to say sounds without stopping. You're going to touch the sounds. Move your finger under each sound when I say it. Get ready. Um, uh, Jacqueline and Maurice moved their fingers under the mmm as soon as I said it. Good job. Everybody put your finger back on the first ball of the arrow. Let's see if you can all touch each sound as soon as I say it. Get ready. Um, all right. Lucinda touched under the sounds as soon as I said them that time. Let's try it again. Back to the big ball. Get ready. Um, again, back to the big ball. Get ready. Um, good job, Jason. That time everybody touched under the sounds as soon as I said them. Let's see if you can do that again. Finger on the big ball. Good moving your finger under that big ball. Here we go. Get ready. Um, good moving your finger under each sound. If after a few tries students still don't respond appropriately, you lead by moving their fingers for them. Repeat the exercise until children can respond two times in a row correctly without assistance. Now practice using that correction procedure with three or four other people. At least one of the people responding should act as a student who moves slowly. Be sure everyone gets a chance to be the teacher. Students first apply sounding out skills in a take-home workbook exercise on Lesson 19 of Reading Mastery 1 and Lesson 4 of Fast Cycle 1. Find that exercise in your teacher presentation book A and the student take-home workbook. In this exercise, the teacher models how to blend sounds without stopping while the children touch under the appropriate symbol that appears on an arrow on their worksheet. The teacher starts by holding up a worksheet and pointing to the big ball on an arrow and tells the children to touch that ball of the arrow on their own worksheet. The teacher then says the blended sounds. When the teacher says the first sound, the children touch the dot under the first symbol. They don't say the sound. When the teacher says the next sound, the children are to move immediately their fingers to the dot under that symbol. I'll demonstrate using those techniques in this format. Put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. Good job. I'm going to say the sounds without stopping. You're going to touch under the sounds. Move your finger under each sound when I say it. Get ready. Um, again, finger on the first ball of the arrow. Get ready. Um, good, touching the sounds. 
remember, when students are doing a take-home activity, you want them to keep looking at their own worksheets, not at you. So your signal for them to respond has to be auditory, a clap, snap, or tap. Also, remember the importance of using consistent timing. You say, get ready, and then an instant later you give the signal. When you model sounding out, you say each sound for about two to three seconds and blend to the next sound. You monitor by watching the children's fingers as you say the sounds. Keep your finger on the teacher presentation book. That will help you keep your place. Now together, let's practice those teaching techniques for that workbook sounding out exercise. You need to use both your teacher presentation book and a take-home worksheet. If you don't have a take-home, you can copy the arrow and the sounds onto a piece of paper so that it looks like this. We'll start on step A on the count of three. One, two, three. Put your finger on the first ball of this arrow. Good touching. I'm going to say the sounds without stopping. You're going to touch under the sounds. Move your finger under the sound when I say it. Get ready. Um, good touching again. Finger on the first ball of the arrow. Get ready. Um, good touching. Now practice this exercise with a partner. Don't make any errors when you're acting as the student. The final step in the format, step E, directs the teacher to give individual turns to different children on step B or step D. Remember the general technique for giving individual turns. If the group is large, give turns only to some of the children. Be sure to include the lowest performers. When giving turns, try to keep all the children attentive. You tell the students something like, Everybody, it's time for turns. Remember to keep your eyes on the book so that you can learn even when it's not your turn. If a child makes a blending error during an individual turn, model the correct response, then have the whole group respond as you lead, then test the group and watch the child who made the error. Finally, test that child individually. Now, in a group, practice the entire sounding out exercise. Each person should get a chance to be the teacher and correct a blending error during an individual turn. The most common error that children make during a sound out exercise is pausing between the sounds. For example, instead of saying s -a, a child says s -a. This kind of error, if not corrected, may impede a child's progress in learning to read. Remember, you'll use a model lead test correction procedure. First, you state the expectation and model the response. Say the sounds without stopping between them. My turn. Listen. S -s -s then you lead until all the children respond correctly with you. Say it with me. Get ready. S -s -s Again, get ready. Again, get ready. One more time. Get ready. As a general rule, respond with the students until they can respond correctly with you at least twice in a row. Then you have them respond on their own. You test the group by presenting the original step they missed. All by yourself, 
Get ready. I'll demonstrate those steps. Get ready. Eh. Say the sounds without stopping between them. My turn. Listen. S -sa. Say it with me. Get ready. S -sa. Again. Get ready. S -sa. Again. Get ready. S -sa. One more time. Get ready. S -sa. All by yourselves. Get ready. S -sa. Good same. S -sa. Now we'll practice that correction together. You just said get ready in step B and a student responded with S -a. On the count of three, we'll start by stating the expectation. One, two, three. Say the sounds without stopping between them. My turn. Listen. S -sa. Say it with me. Get ready. S -sa. Again, get ready. S -sa. Again, get ready. S -sa. One more time. Get ready. S -sa. All by yourselves. Get ready. S -sa. Good saying. S -sa. Now with a partner, practice being the teacher using that model lead test correction for a blending error in step B. The person acting as the student should pause between the sounds. Say, S -a. Let's talk about the next step in the correction procedure, starting over. Remember, our goal is to present an exercise until the children can respond correctly on every step. If you had to use the model lead test correction with the group on either SA or MA in this exercise, next you would repeat the entire exercise from the beginning. If you spend the extra time early in the program firming the children's responses, progress later will be much smoother and take less time. Here's how to firm blending through step D of the sound out exercise. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. S -sa. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. S -sa. Again, get ready. S -sa. Good saying. S -sa. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. M -ma. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Say the sounds without stopping. My turn. Mm -hmm. Say it with me. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. One more time. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying the sounds. You didn't stop. Good saying them, Jason, without stopping between. Great. Let's start over and let's do that whole thing again without stopping between the sounds. First word, my turn. Sa. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. 
Get ready. Set. Again, get ready. Set. Good saying. Set. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. M Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. M Again, get ready. M Good saying. M Here's what I did to motivate students. Before I returned to the beginning of the exercise, I praised a student and stated a specific expectation for the group. It's important to give recognition to children who display the desired behavior. The recognition serves as a motivator for all the children. They want recognition, and you are making it clear how to get it. You don't have to praise every child each time. A praise statement to one or two children will usually motivate the group. Then at the end of the exercise, you can make a big deal about how all the children got the whole thing right. Now, in a group of three or four people, practice that praise procedure as part of a firming and correction. Go through step D only. Now I'll demonstrate the entire sound out exercise. I'll demonstrate individual turns too. You may respond as a student as you observe. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. S -sa Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Set. Again, get ready. Set. Good saying. Set. My turn, I'll show you how to say these sounds. I'll do it without stopping between the sounds. M Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. M Again, get ready. M Good saying the sounds without stopping. All right, time for turns. It's going to be Rolanda's turn. Get ready. S Again, get ready. Good saying. Jesse's turn. Get ready. M Again, get ready. M Good saying. M All right, now let's teach the whole exercise together. Remember on step B and D, you don't answer with the children. We'll give individual turns and we'll call on Rolanda and Jesse. We'll start on the count of three. One, two, three. My turn, I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between sounds. S Your turn, say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. S Again, get ready. S Good saying. S My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between sounds. M Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. M Again, 
Get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Time for turns. Let's have Rolanda say this one. Get ready. S Again, get ready. S Good saying. S Jesse, get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Now you practice with your partner. Don't make mistakes when you're acting as the student, but do provide feedback on following the script and signaling. Monitoring students' responses is very important. As much as possible, your eyes should be on the children when you signal. You watch the children's eyes to see if they are attending, and you watch their mouths to make sure they are saying the correct sounds. Here are some hints that will help you monitor carefully. Whenever you place your finger on the big ball of the arrow, always glance up to make sure the children are attending. When you say, get ready, glance at the book, and then, Look at the children as you move to the first sound. Then, just before you move to the next sound, quickly glance at the book and then at the children. Now watch me do that. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Now practice in a group on step B or step D only. Each person should get a turn to be the teacher and practice signaling and monitoring. A format introduced during this lesson span integrates simple identification and say it fast skills and sets up the students for other blending exercises that will require them to say sounds without stopping while looking at symbols. I'll demonstrate the new signaling. You'll hear one off-camera voice which will act as my group, but you can also respond as a student. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. Mm. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm. Again, get ready. Mm. Say it fast. Mm. Yes, mmm. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Eh. Again, get ready. Eh. Say it fast. Eh. Yes, eh. Okay. Notice that the initial part of the signal I used is the same as the symbol identification signal for a continuous sound a loop. And the signal for say it fast is a slash. Now I'll demonstrate the looping signal again. This time it's used in another new format, sounding out. You respond as a student. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. S your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. 
Seh. Again, get ready. Seh. Good saying. Seh. My turn. I'll show you how to say these sounds without stopping between the sounds. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Remember, whenever you present a format that requires children to look at symbols in the teacher presentation book, you begin with your finger on the big ball of the arrow. You pause several seconds with your finger on the ball to focus the children's attention and give them thinking time. Then, an instant before you want the children to respond, you say, get ready, then quickly move your finger to the dot under the first sound. Keep your finger under that sound for about three seconds, then quickly move to the dot under the next sound. Hold that sound for three seconds, then crisply move your finger from the last sound. Now, let's practice together on that looping signal. If you're teaching Reading Mastery 1, open your teacher presentation book A to Lesson 19, Task 7. If you're teaching Fast Cycle 1, open to Lesson 4, Task 7. Put your finger on the big ball of the first arrow. On the count of three, you'll say, get ready, and loop to the first dot, and hold your finger there for about three seconds. Count one, two, three to yourself, and then quickly loop to the next dot. Hold your finger there for about three seconds, count to three, and then quickly move your finger off. All right, starting with your finger on the big ball. Here we go, on the count of three, we'll say get ready and signal. One, two, three. Get ready, move, one, two, three. Move, one, two, three, finger off. Let's do that again on the count of three. One, two, three. Get ready. One, two, three. One, two, three. Finger off. All right. Now let's signal for ma. Finger on the big ball. On the count of three. One, two, three. Get ready. Move. One, two, three. Move. One, two, three. Finger off. And let's do that again on the count of three. One, two, three. Get ready. One, two, three. One, two, three. Finger off. Here are some signaling mistakes that can make it difficult for children to respond. See if you can tell exactly what I'm doing wrong. Here's the first example. Get ready. It would be unclear to children when to start and stop saying each sound. Here's the next example. Get ready. I paused too long between saying get ready and the signal. Imagine that when you say get ready, you're telling the children to take a breath and then answer. If students had taken a breath when I said get ready, they would have run out of air before they could respond. All right, here's the last example. Get ready. I did not touch each sound long enough. When children are first learning to blend, they need several seconds to recall a sound. Signaling too quickly can rush children into random guessing. Before we proceed, read step D of the exercise. Study what the teacher says and does. Now 
I'll demonstrate teaching step D with clear looping signals and brisk pacing. You can respond as a student. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. I maintained a quick pace and immediately after the student blended the sounds, I put my finger back on the first ball of the arrow and paused several seconds. This pause enables students to catch their breath and think about their next response. Let's practice step D together. Hold up your book so that you can read it and students can see. Put your finger on the ball of the arrow. On the count of three, we'll start. Here we go. One, two, three. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Let's practice together again on step D. Finger on the ball of the arrow. We'll start on the count of three. One, two, three. Your turn. Say the sounds as I touch under them. Don't stop between the sounds. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Again, get ready. Mm -hmm. Good saying. Mm -hmm. Now, practice teaching just step D in pairs or small groups. Each person gets to be the teacher. When you are acting as the student, don't make any errors, but do give feedback on signaling and pacing. You may implement a teacher versus the group point game with any or all exercises in the lesson. The basic techniques to remember are to maintain a quick pace while you clearly state academic and behavioral expectations and give specific feedback. Watch. We're going to play that fun game again and I want to win today. I'm going to put my points here by the tricky teacher face. I don't have a big smile yet, but I'm going to try to have one by the end of the lesson. Remember, I get my points when you get tricked and forget to follow the rules. Here are your faces down here. Let's see if you can get smiley faces at the end of the lesson by earning lots of points for getting things right the first time. Now, here comes a chance to earn some points. It's worth three points if you get this all right the first time. You're going to say some sounds. When I hold up my finger, say, Rrr. Rrr. Oh, good, I just got a teacher point. I tricked somebody. All right, let's try it again. This time it'll be worth two points if everybody says the sound the right way when I hold up my tricky finger. Okay, when I hold up my finger, say, Rrr. Get ready. Oh, good saying the sound and good waiting. Next sound, say D. Get ready. D. D. Good job. Next sound, say F. Get ready. F. Oh, good saying those sounds and good waiting. Two points for the kids. All right. Now it's going to be five points if you mm. get this next thing right the first time. Okay, here it is. See if you can say all these sounds without making a mistake. Get ready. S yes. S Get ready. A yes. A. Get ready. Mm. Yes. Mm. Get ready. E yes. E. 
Get ready. Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, good saying all those sounds the right way. Five more points for the kids team. Okay. Now it's going to be five more points mm. if you get this right the first time. Yes. First, you're going to say a word slowly without stopping between the sounds. Then you're going to say the word fast. Listen. Say read. Listen again. Read. Get ready. Read. Again. Get ready. Read. Say it fast. Read. Yes, read. Listen. Say nose. Get ready. Nose. Again. Get ready. Nose. Say it fast. Nose. Yes, nose. Listen. Say eat. Get ready. Eat. Say it fast. Eat. Yes, eat. How many points did you get? Five. 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 Another five Whoa. points. Wow, are you winning today? Okay, let's go on to the next thing. To make the challenge game motivating, before I presented each exercise, I stated the number of points to be earned for first time correct responding. The only time I took a teacher point was for inattentive or off task behavior. I maintained a quick pace, was positive and encouraging while I firmed, then reduced points after the correction before I started over. If students made an academic error, I would not take a teacher point. I'd simply do the regular correction, remain positive and encouraging, and reduce points before starting the exercise over. In future segments, I'll present more information about motivating children and first-time correct performance. A sounds firming format introduced during this lesson range incorporates a motivational point game. This activity was designed to be fun and motivate children to attend carefully and respond correctly on signal. Don't do it like this. I'm smart. I bet I can beat you in a game. See this mmm? That's for me. I put my marks up here. Every time I win, I put a mark up here. Your marks go here. This is you. Uh, every time you win, I put a mark here. Here's the rule. If everybody says the sound correctly when I signal, you win a point. If you make a mistake or say the sound late, I win a point. Each time somebody wins a point, I'll make a mark in the score box. Get ready. Uh. Some of you miss getting a point for that sound because you didn't answer with the group. You're not watching the book. How many times do I have to tell you to watch the book? I win the point. Get ready. Mm. Get ready. Mm. Get ready. I win the point again. When you slow down your pacing by spending an inordinate amount of time lecturing children, you'll probably get the behavior you don't want. Now I'll demonstrate presenting this exercise with techniques that usually result in children who are firm and are motivated to work hard. I'm smart. I bet I can beat you in a game. All right? See this mmm? That's for me. I put my marks here. Every time I win, I put a mark here. All right? This is you. Your marks go next to the face. Every time you win, I put a mark here. Here's the rule. Every time you say the sound correctly, when I signal, you win a point. If I trick you and you come in late, you don't follow my signal, I win a point. Each time somebody wins a point, I'll make a mark. All right? Here we go. Get ready. Uh -huh. 
Uh, Woo, I tricked somebody. Let's see if you can do it as soon as I touch it. Get ready. Uh, yes, and you said it as soon as I touch it. Good for you. Next one, see if you can say it as soon as I touch it. Get ready. Mm. Yes, mm, good job of saying it. Get ready. Mm. Yes, mmm. Get ready. Shh. Yes. Get ready. Mm. Yes, mmm. Get ready. Shh. Yes. Wow, you're getting so many points. Get ready. Uh. Yes, ah. Uh. Boy, you came right in on time. Get ready. Shh. Yes. Shh. Get ready. Uh. Yes, ah, there's another point for you. Good saying it as soon as I touch it. Okay, let's count up our points. I bet you I win today. Count my points first. Get ready? One. 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 Do you think I won today? No. <laughs> let's count up how many points you have. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Nine points. Who wins? We did. Yeah, you were getting really smart on saying those sounds. Now in pairs, practice brisk pacing, firming, and reinforcing students for responding correctly on signal.